Right, good evening. You might find it strange to find on a on the Trinity Drones channel something relating to ERP, Enhanced Resource Planning, which is ERP Next. Uh, I actually want to use this uh, for the production planning of Trinity Drones and during the past few weeks, even months, um, I went through a bit of a learning curve and found that many of the videos on YouTube uh, just seem to fall short of what I'm looking for. And um, well, what I found I'd like to share, I'm by no means the ERP Next expert. Uh, there's many things that people can perhaps add to this, but certainly I'd like to share this if it's going to help somebody. Right, let's log in without any further ado. So we click on login, and of course we log in as in with any website. Oops. Right, you may have noticed that the sign up button has been removed. That's for security purposes. Right, this is the uh, first dashboard of ERP Next. Uh, this, of course, I have to add quickly, has been configured for a manufacturing business, Trinity Drones. We manufacture uh, drones, but you can also configure ERP Next for uh, point of sale um, training. In other words, keeping track of your students, um, agriculture, if you've got a farm, distribution. Uh, there's, there's quite a few uh, industries that you can configure ERP next to be used in. This one's been configuring for manu configured for manufacturing. So please keep in mind that everything that I'm doing is geared towards manufacturing, but certainly, you know, the pages and the methodology behind this is going to be the same regardless of the industry that you work with. I'm intending actually to aim towards the manufacturing cycle. That was the main uh, thing that I was battling with. Um, but before we can do that, we need to uh, go through a few basic things. I mean, it's pointless for me to just stumble into manufacturing and not show you how to set up a few things. So in this video, I'm just going to show you a few things that you need to set up or that needs to be set up already um, so that we don't have to bother with us when we get to the manufacturing video. All right, let's, without further ado, um, Go to the customer group. Oops. There's the customer group tree. There you'll see there's different types of customers. This is default. I did not create this. If you want to add anything, you say add a child and you'd be able to add a group. All right. Um, but those are the standard ones commercial, government, individual, non profit. Those will work for me. Um, certainly later on, maybe I'll add something. But for the moment, that will do. Then, of course, item groups. What is an item? If we go to buying and we click on item, you'll see yes, all the items. Um, let me just clear. You'll see that uh, throughout all many of the pages, there's these filtering fields. So if you filter on raw material, it'll only show raw material. I want to show you everything. So um, there it adds the sub-assemblies. Now these items are the small, smallest item that can be used to build my drones. You know, the nuts and the bolts and the motors and the propellers. All right, so these are items. So I've got a few item groups, raw material and sub-assemblies. Um, so let's have a look at item groups. You'll notice that I, uh, there's many ways to navigate to these pages. You can click on the main menu and find your, find your way like that. That's also valid. I, I seem to like this method. Uh, there's not a right or a wrong, whatever works for you. So there I click, there you can see all the uh, item groups, uh, sub-assemblies, raw materials, and of course products are the main ones. Then you've got services, you know, um, making of a video, um, uh, uh, performing the branding for a company. Those are all services. IP assets is the result of a branding. 
um, service, you get the branding um, intellectual property, the, 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 the icons, the banners, the letterheads, and all those types of things. Fixed assets, you know what that is. Consumables, you know what that is. So these are all the um, item uh, groups, things that you can buy or sell, you know, those types of things. And of course, once again, you can click here and you can add a child uh, if you feel like expanding that. Right, that's the item groups now, supplier groups. So, supplier groups. No, sorry, I clicked on the supplier group. Oops. There we go. All right, a um, whole bunch of these are standard. I added foreign and local you simply add one by clicking on new and you fill out the fields all right these ones seem to work pretty well um, for your business you might want to add something i import some of the stuff so some of my suppliers are foreign and some of the stuff i purchase from local Th those are the two distinctions i made if you want to go for the for a more finer distinction pharmaceutical hardware electrical then those groups are indeed available uh, warehouses this is very important warehouse tree there we go these are all our warehouses now the stores obviously keep the items that I've referred to the individual the nuts and the bolts and the motors um, <clears throat> then of course you can construct modules I've made the drones modular you can uh, a leg for instance is a leg module you can build leg modules and just take four leg modules and make a that's in, instead of just having nuts and bolts and so there's certain modules you can uh, complete beforehand and then of course finished goods would be your finished drone um, so the progress would be from stores there's certain actions that will yield modules and there are certain actions that together with modules and items from the stores will yield a drone. Right, so that's how they fit in. Now you might wonder what this work in progress is. This will become very clear when we look at the manufacturing process. It basically comes when you manufacture something, either a module or a finished good. Um, the job card uh, requires you to have certain items to be able to construct either a module or a finished product. Those items are uh, rooted from the store, um, transferred is the right word, from the stores to the work in progress. It's almost like you're keeping it aside. So the guy that takes his job card and needs to do something goes to the work in progress stores and gets all his stuff. All right, so it's almost like an intermediate warehouse. Uh, that's very important. So that's my warehouse structure. Maybe yours will differ slightly, but... There we go. Um, and then, then, of course, you get your suppliers, the actual suppliers. Supplier list. Um, here's all the suppliers. There you can see some of them are local and some of them are foreign. If you want to add a supplier, you simply say new and you fill out the, um, the, the name of the supplier. All right. So rather simple to add a su supplier. And then, of course, we we looked at the items. We've already done that. Uh, modules is also on the item list. Let me go back there anyway, briefly, just to show you. Those are that's a module, a subassembly. All right, and you add one the same way you would add an item. Um, you fill the SKU number and the item name. And in that way, you can add an item. Now, the SKU number you can see here. That you'll have to work out your own system. I've got a system whereby um, I've got an SKU 10,000 series, a 20,000 series, a 30,000 series. 10,000 might be nuts or bolts. I can't remember exactly now. 20,000 would be electronic equipment, uh, electronic um, items. 30,000 might be 3D printed parts and so on. And that's the way I've categorized it. I've seen other people using alphabet SKU A and then a number, uh, SKU B and a number, etc. So work out your own stock number. That's my stock number. Um, 
and in that way you can actually uh, label your item with a particular number. Although you'll see that wherever we work with these items, it shows you both the description and the number. So you can still work just on the on the description. But it is good to have um, a number system as well. Right, next up, the manufacturing um, important things. Right, here we go. Bill of materials, workstation, operation, routing. How does that work? Um, for you to make either a module or a drone, you need to do certain actions at a workstation. Those actions are operations. Example, I need to make a leg module, a construction of leg module. So that's a workstation and the actual operation. All right. Uh, the process of of making a leg module might require more than one workstation and this you will list in the routing. So the routing lists um, multiple operations at multiple workstations to yield a module or a product. I hope that made sense. So first up you'll define your workstation. I've only got one so far. Ultimately there's about six of them. Um, this is, by the way, this instance of ERP Next is just a playing playing system, if you want to call this. I've cloned it from my main site so that I, I don't enter um, junk data, so to say, while I'm getting to know ERP Next. Um, on my main site, that's totally uh, on a different uh, cloud server. And yeah, I can do as I please. So in this case, I've just had, added one um, workstation and then you click on it and it says okay well you know those that's my cost rent cost uh, consumable cost wages and by this in this way you can trap your costs to any action related to that workstation all right you set your times where you can use it between eight and five uh, so that any production planning won't schedule actions before that or after that time Clearly, if you work 24 hours, these will change. All right, so you can define anything in a workstation. Obviously, if you want to add a workstation, you just click on New and you add the name. It's rather simple. Good. Operation. Very simple as well. Same thing. There's the operation. Assembly of leg module. You might notice that these are very ordinary descriptions. I mean, you know, keep it simple. What am I doing? I'm assembly a leg, uh, assembling a leg module. So that's the operation name. And there you click on it and it says that's the default workstation where that gets done, that operation, and a little bit of a description if you so desire. Okay, obviously a, a new operation, you click on new and you simply add the name there and it will appear on the list as well. Good. Routing really is as I said previously there's a route identific identification name assembly of leg module I'm going to click on this and you'll see it's rather simple we only use one station for this uh, but obviously if you use more than one station you would add a row for all of these stations and it'll list for this particular uh, um, routing name assembly of leg modules you'll use maybe three or four stations uh, st there's the station and what's the operation being done at that workstation and how long all right um, and where we use this it'll become apparent when we do the manufacturing video so hold on tight and of course then your bill of materials you'll do there's my bill of material for SKU 7002, which is, of course, the leg module. All right. So if you click on there, you can see it's active. Um, and there's a cost in, uh, figure as well. So you click on the bill of material. There you can see there's the item and the description. Unit of measure is each. All right. And then, of course, it says here, you are going to perform this action with an operation. 
if there's no real operation, um, then you won't use operation. Okay. Uh, the transfer of material is done against the works order. And once again, you'll see when we do the work order in the manufacturing video, you'll see why, why that's important. All right, here's the operation. Uh, assembly of leg module at the workstation module assembly. That's the operating time. I suspect it'll take an hour. All right. So that's the operation for this bomb. What material am I going to use? These are the uh, items. It's a leg, it's a leg cover, it's a feet. Okay, grammatically, I suppose that should have been a foot, but anyway. And there's a screw and a nut. So the operation with these items will yield a leg module. All right, so that's your bill of materials. Okay, and together with all the costing of the station, it arrives at a certain cost. All right. <clears throat> right, and that's this is the this is the very important bit that when we get to the manufacturing video. One last bit I need to look at is the chart of accounts. Chart of accounts. There you've got the assets, the liabilities, equity, income, and expenses. If you want to expand that, you simply click on it. All right, there's the. Um, this is all assets, so it's current assets, fixed assets, investments, and temporary accounts. Right. If you want to add something there that you feel is necessary, you click on uh, the group. You'll see a group. It's got a slightly different icon than a non-group entry. All right. And I'm not going to add anything yet. It's rather simple. You just click on child. I think these um, accounts are rather comprehensive. Um, you might might want to add a bank account. All right. But all these um, accounts receivables, debtors, they're all in place and they're set up by default. So um, unless you are very sure of what you're doing, I would not fiddle, uh, fiddle around too much with this. Where you can make additions, and where I certainly did, was on the expenses, more specifically indirect expenses. Um, here's all the indirect expenses of administrative expenses, uh, commissioning, depreciation, entertainment expenses, everything, everything. There's your freight and forwarding, very important for me. Um, and I, I wanted to make a distinction between foreign and local bank charges, so I added those two. You'll also see that there's some room here in the account numbering for you to add something. So there's the chart of accounts. Um, that's this. This comes default with ERP Next. Okay, that was a bit of a overview of some of the things that you need to set up for what we're going to do in the next two videos: the purchasing um, of stock, and then we're going to use the stock. Um, in the manufacturing cycle to produce modules. Well, in, this, in that case, it'll be a module, but it's pretty much the same as you would for a production drone. That's it I want to say for this video. I'll see you in the upcoming videos.